Welcome back to Beyond the Light. I'm Charlotte. Today I invite you to immerse yourself in two incredible near-death experience stories that will leave you breathless. Listen to these two stories because they will take you on a journey between life and the afterlife, offering you a unique and fascinating perspective on the nature of existence and the mystery of death. Enjoy. My name is Michael Harrison, and I live in a small American town called Maplewood. I am a mechanic and run a small workshop that I inherited from my father. My life was simple and ordinary until one day everything changed. It was a Friday evening like many others. I had finished working late and was on my way home. I was tired, and all I could think about was getting home and relaxing with a beer in front of the TV. Rex, my faithful dog, was waiting for me at home, as usual. I was driving on the main road when suddenly a car cut me off. I had no time to react. Everything happened in a flash, the deafening sound of the crash, the glass shattering, and then darkness. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in a completely different place. It wasn't the hospital, it wasn't my car, it wasn't Maplewood. I was in a place I had never seen before, but it emanated a peace and serenity that was indescribable. At first I was confused and scared. I tried to understand where I was, but everything around me was bathed in a soft, warm light. I felt strangely light, as if my body had no weight. I walked, or perhaps it would be better to say, I floated through this mysterious place. There were no buildings, just a vast expanse of light and colors. As I moved forward, I began to see familiar figures, people I had known and loved, people I had lost. There was my mother with her sweet smile and my father with his warm embrace. There was also Emily, my beloved wife. They looked different, younger and more serene, but I knew it was them. I was overwhelmed by a wave of emotions. My mother hugged me, and I felt all her sweetness and love. She looked at me with those warm eyes that had always had the power to calm me. Michael, you're here, she said with a smile that seemed to light up everything around us. My father patted me on the shoulder, as he always did when I was a child, and wanted to make me feel proud. You've grown well, my son, he said. We are proud of you. Emily was there, radiant as the day I married her. She took my hand and smiled at me, a smile full of love and serenity. I've been waiting for you, she said softly. I knew we would see each other again. Then a calm and deep voice spoke. Michael, it said, welcome. I turned and saw a luminous figure. I couldn't distinguish the features of his face, but I knew it was God. It wasn't as I had imagined, but it radiated an authority and benevolence that made me feel immediately safe. You are confused, I know, God continued, but do not fear you are here for a reason. He explained that I had been chosen to see what few had seen. He would show me paradise and reveal a secret that would change my life forever. Paradise was beyond anything I could have imagined. It was a place of unparalleled beauty and peace. I saw green meadows and flowers of colors never seen on earth. I heard celestial music that seemed to come from everywhere. The people who inhabited it were happy and in harmony. I walked through endless meadows where the grass was as soft as silk under my feet and the flowers emitted fragrances I had never smelled before. Every flower, every tree, Every creature seemed to emit its own light, a light that was not only visible, but also tangible, filling the air with a sense of peace and well-being. I met people of all ages and backgrounds, all united by a common joy. I saw children playing carefree, elderly people resting under shady trees, and families reunited in perfect harmony. Every face I saw reflected a deep serenity a pure happiness that seemed unattainable on earth. 
God took me to an extraordinary garden where trees were covered with luminous fruits and flowers sang sweet melodies. This is the place where every soul finds peace, he explained. He showed me a sparkling waterfall that fell into a crystal clear lake and the water emanated a light that healed all pain. Then God led me to a hill from which a breathtaking panorama could be seen. Look, he said, and I saw people I knew in earthly life, all united in harmony, smiling and happy. Every act of kindness and love on earth creates beauty here, he continued. Every generous gesture, every word of comfort has an impact. He showed me a golden city with streets paved with light and houses that seemed made of crystal. People walked together, laughing and talking, and there was a sense of community that I had never experienced before. This is the true essence of life, God said, a place of love and sharing. God then took me to an infinite library where books floated in the air and words danced like stars. Here is preserved the wisdom of all souls, he explained. He showed me a special book, my book of life. As I leafed through it, I saw every moment of my existence, every choice, every mistake, every act of love. Every life is a unique story, God said, and every story has a purpose. Finally, God revealed the secret to me. Michael, the life you know is only part of a larger design. Every experience, every suffering, every joy has a purpose. Your task is to go back and share this message. You must live with love and compassion and teach others to do the same. I felt overwhelmed by the responsibility and honor of this task. I wasn't sure I was up to it, but God reassured me. You are never alone, Michael. I am always with you. God showed me how every act of kindness and love on earth had an impact here. Every generous gesture, every word of comfort created beauty and peace in paradise. He showed me how even the smallest acts of kindness could have a profound effect. I woke up in the hospital surrounded by familiar and concerned faces. I was alive, but I knew I would never be the same. The experience had changed me deeply. I felt a new strength within me, a new determination to live differently. After the accident, my life changed radically. I began to dedicate myself more to others, to be more present and loving with the people around me. I shared my experience with anyone who wanted to listen, and many found comfort and hope in my words. Maplewood began to change with me. People became more united, more kind. I saw the change in small daily gestures, a smile, unexpected help, a word of comfort. I started attending community activities more, participating in neighborhood meetings and offering my time to help those in need. I became a volunteer at the local church and started organizing meetings to share my story. I didn't want anyone to feel as alone or desperate as I had felt after losing Emily. People came to me to hear about my experience, seeking comfort in my words. It didn't matter whether they believed in my story or not. What mattered was that they found hope and inspiration in the message I conveyed. The Maplewood community became more cohesive, more supportive, I saw people helping each other, families reuniting, and individuals finding strength and courage. Today, I look back on that day as a turning point. That experience taught me that life is precious and every moment counts. I have learned that love and compassion can change the world one small gesture at a time. My story may seem incredible, but I hope it can inspire anyone who reads it to live with more love and awareness. No matter how difficult life may seem, there is always hope. There is always a reason to move forward and do good. Remember, you are never alone. There is always a light, even in the darkest moments, and that light can guide you towards a better future. 
The first story has concluded. Now I invite you to listen to the second one. Enjoy listening. I was a child, about nine years old. One day my family decided to spend a day at the stream near the town where we lived. It was a typical summer day with the sun shining high in the sky and the fresh air smelling of freshly cut grass. We children were particularly excited. We loved playing near the water, hopping on the rocks that crossed the bank. I remember that day I was doing just that, hopping from one rock to another, trying not to get my feet wet. I felt happy, free, while the sound of the flowing water filled the air. But at a certain point, everything changed. I slipped on one of the rocks, and the current, stronger than I had imagined, carried me away. I desperately clung to a rock, trying not to be dragged further away. I hadn't hit my head and hadn't lost consciousness. My head was above water so I could breathe. However, at some point, everything transformed. I was no longer there, or rather my body was there, but my mind was elsewhere. I no longer saw the water or the landscape around me. Instead, I found myself in another dimension, a dimension of indescribable peace and serenity. I felt no fear, only a profound calm. My short life flashed before my eyes as if it were a film projected on a giant screen. I saw myself as a child saw my parents, saw happy moments and sad moments. It was as if everything had happened just a moment before. Then suddenly, everything returned to normal. I felt a hand grab my arm and pull me up. It was my sister. They told me that she had seen me struggling against the current and without thinking twice, had rushed to help me. Once out of the water, everything seemed so real and tangible, but the experience I had lived remained etched in my mind as an indelible memory. Growing up, I couldn't get that strange experience out of my head. I had never heard of such things, not at my age. I excluded any psychological conditioning as I had no knowledge of similar phenomena. Yet that experience had left me with questions that had no answers. Years later, as an adult, I read about the phenomenon of near-death experiences, or NDEs, and found in many descriptions a similarity to what I had experienced. However, there were anomalies in my case. I was not in mortal danger, I had not had significant trauma, and I had no breathing problems. So why had I experienced an NDE? Perhaps it was enough simply to be in a situation of real, concrete risk. Perhaps it was sufficient to be at a crossroads between life and death. During my experience, I did not perceive anyone coming to meet me, as I had read in others' accounts. There was no familiar figure, no being of light. I was just in a place without judgment, without questions, a place difficult to explain in words. I remember feeling welcomed without the need to give answers or ask why. It was a feeling of completeness and peace that I had never experienced before nor ever after. Even today, looking back, I find it difficult to put into words what I felt. It was a place out of time and space, a place of pure existence that experience profoundly marked my life. It pushed me to seek answers to read and learn about what I had lived. I discovered that many people have had similar experiences, each with its peculiarities, but all with a common thread of peace and awareness. Some see tunnels of light, others meet loved ones who reassure them. I did not have these visions, but the experience was equally powerful. I have often wondered why I did not see anyone, Perhaps I was not ready yet. Perhaps I simply had to understand that it was not my time. My experience was not a call, but an open window to something greater. It taught me to appreciate life, to live with greater awareness and gratitude. Now every time I return to the stream, I sit on one of the rocks, 
and listen to the sound of the flowing water. I think back to that day and how it changed me. I tell my story not to impress, but to share a part of me that has made me the person I am today. Perhaps my experience can comfort those who have lived through something similar or simply offer a point of reflection on what it really means to live. There are still many unanswered questions, but I have learned to accept them. Life is a mystery, and sometimes the answers are not what we need. Sometimes it is the journey and the search that matter. And so I continue to live with the awareness that there is much more than we can see or understand. That day at the stream showed me a fragment of eternity, and for that I will always be grateful.